Okay. So I noticed you have a book report due. Nail it and scale it. I've been doing what I've done for 24 years, and at some point I'm going to nail it, and then I'm going to scale it. So I'll do my book report too. So um, I appreciate the opportunity to come in and speak with you. I understand that there's, from all disciplines, it's not just business majors here. And so I want to kind of give you a, a general idea of kind of what what I went through and um, just by way of kind of a little bit of background when I was a kid um, there was a hot dog stand that was not too far from my home that my dad used to go to and he used to take me there and it was that thing that kind of I used to say maybe someday I'll I mean actually I didn't say maybe I said someday I'm gonna have a hot dog stand and um, as I looked at that, as I got older, and this was when I was a kid, I used to sit on the counter, but as I got older and, and looked at doing something like this, um, I, I thought, and this is a question that I think any entrepreneur is going to ask themselves at some point, is how hard can it be? I mean, how hard can it be to sell a hot dog? And um, I can tell you that if you're asking yourself, that question, how hard can it be in any endeavor that's worthwhile, then you will be like me, an idiot. So that question is, you can ask it, but just remember I said, you know, you're an idiot. So, um, and, I'll, and I'll show you a little bit why. But when I was here at BYU, the Tanner Building was here without the extension, and I took a course in one of these from a professor, uh, Pierce, who taught some sort of finance, um, class and in that he was talking about I don't know what he was talking about something finance related but in it he said there's going to be a time with when you are going to be presented you get out there and you're working and you're doing your thing you're going to be presented with an opportunity that looks very interesting to you that will pay you significantly less money and I'm here to tell you this is what he said to us I'm here to tell you that all or a high majority of you will never do it. You'll pass on it because the money will be more important. And I remember sitting there thinking to myself, I could do it. Now, not like look at me, but I thought I could, I could do it. I think I, could, I think I could do it. And I did. But it was just something that was more than simply a casual thought. I really felt it in my gut that I, I would follow something if I really wanted to do it. The other thing was I had, a, I had Professor Hunt who had an entrepreneur class, smaller than this, and, and in it we had to do a business plan. And I did a, I did a business plan on a hot dog stand. So I, I was definitely thinking about it. When I went to USC, graduate work, I, I took another course in entrepreneurship and I did another business plan on a hot dog stand. So what was funny about that business plan is how utterly ridiculous it was. Because like within six months, I was making $6 million a month or something like that. I mean, my numbers were so far off, it was ridiculous. But to a certain extent, you're going to do that. If you choose to do something like this, there's always going to be some blue sky in there. But for me, it was, it was really funny to look back on because it was so unrealistic that it was a joke. So I worked for a company, as um, Brother Fox mentioned, uh, in, in downtown Los Angeles after I finished my MBA. It was a commercial mortgage banking firm and we basically sold money to real estate developers that were looking to place financing on their, on their like, uh, um, office buildings, apartment buildings, or industrial parks, large. Five to $15 million loans we'd place. And we would go out there and meet with them and sit down with them and take them to lunch and, and try to get them to take the money that we were selling. And it was a salary with a commission based in it. And so if you sold a lot of loans, if you got a lot of loans placed, you did pretty well. It was pretty well. And so I'd done it for about five years. And while I was doing that, in the fifth year, I think I probably had five deals go through. All of the deals that I worked, you couldn't, you couldn't do that many in a year. It wasn't like you could do one a day. It was like one every two or three months. You could kind of simultaneously work on them. But I had five deals, and every single one of the deals 
went through. I was working in downtown Los Angeles, relatively newly married, and my wife was also working in downtown Los Angeles, and so we would commute together. So I had a $17.5 million loan fund toward the end of the year. That was the fifth one that funded. And when it funds, it means you're going to get your commission. And so I picked up Christy, and we were starting to drive home, and I said, hey, the jewelry building, it, it funded, which was like, hey, that's pretty cool. And she goes, wow, that's amazing. So every single one of your deals went through. I said, yeah, every single one went through this year. None of them fell through. She said, so what do you think? And I said, I hate my job. And I knew, I knew if I hated it with everything going through perfectly, that I had no hope. So it was not too far after that that I, that I seriously, that we seriously looked at doing the hot dog stand. It was either Los Angeles or Seattle where Christy was from, and we chose Seattle. So we moved. Um, we moved to, to Seattle, and I had to, with, I had no experience in what I was doing. I thought I could provide for a family, and I had, I had real estate experience, but nothing in, nothing in restaurants. And so immediately I went out and I started meeting with places that had spaces for lease. And I would sit down with them and say, hey, I'm, I'm interested in doing this. And, and almost to a person, I would get through it, give them kind of my pitch, and then they would say, take a hike. You don't know what you're doing. Take a hike. And I'd go to the next person, and they'd say, you know, here's the deal. And they'd say, okay, well, take a hike. I mean, we're not going to. You have no idea what you're doing. I did that for about three months. And I was like, gosh, I've got to figure out a different way to do this. And so um, I went down, and I, searched, I had researched the area, and there was a hot dog stand in South Seattle. And I was like, this is this is exactly what I want right here. This, this is perfect. So I went inside and I found the owner and I said, hey, would you, would you ever consider selling this thing? And he said, no. I said, why not? And he said, because I just bought it a month ago. And I was like, yeah. I mean, I just was like, oh, you, I hate you. You got my store. And I was here for the last three months. I wish I would have got it. So I said, well, if you ever change your mind, here's my name and my number and give me a call. So over the next six months, I continued to look and search and try to find something that would work. And what I had was I had back then pre-internet, they had in the classified ads, section 309 was business opportunities. And it was anything from a person selling a farm that was making money to restaurants, which were a lot of restaurants, or whatever business was out there, vending routes or something. It was just a, opportunities to buy a business. And so I would go through those and there would be restaurants or whatever that were, that were in there. Uh, there, were, there were restaurants and things that were in there. And can you turn it off? Yeah, just go blank with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, there were restaurants in there, and, and essentially you would look to buy a location. You could buy a location, and you'd spend whatever it was, but you would essentially be buying their location. They, you maybe, if you wanted to continue the business, you could continue to do what they were doing, but none of them were really hot dog stands. They were selling sandwiches or fish and chips or whatever it was. And so I couldn't find one that fit, but I would always check those things out on the weekend, on a Saturday. I'd look through them and see if, if they looked like they had any promise, and then I would go look at it. I'd look at the, the, the business. Sometimes they would put the address in there. She so could go drive to it and be like, oh, this is too big. It's not a good location. This isn't going to work. But I did that constantly for the next six months, trying to find something that I could, I could get this thing going on. And so... There came a point where I, I found the latest business opportunity section on a Saturday. And there was two, two restaurants that were in there that looked like they might. One of them was listed in some area that was far south of Seattle. And the other one was just, just listed a, a restaurant, a small restaurant for sale in Seattle with a phone number. So I called the number and I said, this is Matt Jones. I'm trying to find a, I'd like to get more, more information on what you have. And then the other one was further south. It, I didn't know where it was, but it was further south. So I left the message and I took off and I drove out to the one and it was far too big. 
It didn't work, and I started to drive back. And as I drove back, I came right by the old hot dog stand where I, the guy that I hated, I, I, went, I went over there, and I stopped in front of it. And it was a Saturday afternoon, and there was nobody there. I mean, there was no, literally nobody, and it was closed. And so they weren't open on Saturdays or Sundays. And I sat in front of there, and I was like, this is what I want. Why can't I find something like this? This is what I want. This would work for me. So I went back home. On Monday morning, I called that same number, the only one that I had left from the business opportunities. I called, the person answered. I said, I'm, this is Matt Jones. I'm calling about this thing. I, I left a message. And they said, okay, what's your name? And I said, it's Matt Jones. So hang on a second. The person picked up the line and said, is this Matt Jones? And I said, yes, it is. And they said, have you ever told or inquired about buying a business from somebody in the Seattle area? And the only place I had done it was the guy that I hated. And I said, yeah, I, I, I left one at a hot dog stand. So well, that's what I have for sale. I have that hot dog stand for sale. It's for sale. Do you want to buy it? And I was like, oh, my goodness. He said, we had your name and number, but I had moved and changed phone numbers between the time that I called them. And so they said, if this guy calls back, put him through. We'll talk to him first. So they came out the next day, and one week later, I was inside the store. So I'll give you, you kind of saw a little bit of a picture here. We'll put that back on. Just give you an idea. It's, it, so this is, what, this is where I started Matt's Famous Chili Dogs. It may look bigger than it is. It's tiny. It's really small. Um, inside. Counters. There's some seats outside. It's kind of an industrial area. The menu. You can see burgers over there, which were added later. Hot dogs. These hot dogs will change your life. <laughs> Hamburgers. Okay. We've always tried to use some humor. I used to put up, I have still have it on one of my cards. It says buy 100 and get a small drink with a lot of ice for half price. <laughs> and sometimes people aren't quite ready. They go, and that's a lot of, that's a lot of hot dogs. <laughs> and I say, yeah, but you got to eat them all at one time. Otherwise, I get ripped off. <laughs> so we have our locations that we list on a poster. You can see where else we're located. And once in a while, somebody will see this one right over here. It's just on a golf course, right? And they go, hey, where, where's the one on the golf course? And I'll go, uh, you gotta, you got to look at the other locations. And then they go, oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't know you were joking around. And I go, well, <laughs> now you do. <laughs> um, so... So once I got in, and I had said, I told you, how hard could it be? And um, I found out pretty quickly how hard it could be to get people to come through the door. This was a business that was run, but it was like a really bad hobby. The guy that ran it just didn't care. The guy that told me, you know, I just bought it, he didn't really have the determination to do anything with it. And so it just kind of sat there, and it wasn't run very well. And so I took over, and I figured, oh, people will just come right in, and they didn't. And I tried to figure out a way to get people through the door, which is extremely, extremely difficult to do, to change human behavior. It's really hard to do it. It seems like it'd be easy. It's really difficult. And that's one of those things where how hard can it be? Try it, and then you'll figure it out. And it's going to be hard. But at that time, in the Seattle Times, there was a guy named John Hinterberger. John Hinterberger had, was the main restaurant critic. And I wanted him to review our restaurant like everybody else did, right? And I called to the, I called, this was like two months, three months in. I called on the phone and I said, can I get a hold of John Hinterberger? And they said, oh yeah. And they put it, and I got through to him. I said, hi, my name is Matt Jones. I have a hot dog stand in Seattle. And I was wondering if you could review our restaurant. And he said, what is wrong with you? You think I'm just going to show up because you want me to be there? And it was like one of those times where you, are halfway through the conversation and you realize what an idiot you really are and then he's just laying into me and I'm like oh yeah actually 
I know, there's no way, but I just did it anyway. So thanks a lot, see you later. <clears throat> and, and so it was, it was a good idea, but there was no way I was gonna get him to come in. <clears throat> so fast forward, you're trying to get people in and you're working hard and you're doing this stuff. Four years later, Hennerberger, <clears throat> Hennerberger wrote an article kind of an overview of Seattle restaurants at the end of the year, and it weighed one little comment in there, and it said, <clears throat> I wish Seattle had good hot dog stands. I wish Seattle had good hot dog stands. And I was like, okay, now, there's an in. I can't call him, because I already tried that. So I made up little pieces of paper that said, John Hindenburg says there's no good hot dogs in, in Seattle. If you feel so inclined, here's his phone number. And I just handed it out to the customers that I had gotten over the time. And they were a very loyal following. I had a very loyal following. And so he got like 47 calls in 15 minutes. And he was like, whoa, where is this place? And it was totally different because he was like, there was an idiot that called me like four years ago, but where's this place you're talking about? I didn't say that. But anyway, he was like, wow, this is incredible. I mean, what, where is this place? And so... He called me on the phone, said, where are you looking at? You, what are you, some kind of idiot? You think I'm just going to tell you where I... <laughs> I, I said, well, we're, this is where we're at. He, as I think he thought maybe we were a cart, like I was pushing a cart around. Like, where are you between 12 and noon? Well, it depends if it's hot, I'm going to be... You know. So I was like, no, we're right down here at 4th and East Marginal. He says, well, I'm coming down there. And he came down and... He reviewed us, which is, I'll show you. <clears throat> okay, John Hinnerberger, 1996, it's been, it's been 20 years. So <clears throat> this here was huge. And I really didn't know how huge it was going to be. I thought it would like, bring a few people. I thought it would bring a lot of people in. I thought it would bring a lot of people in. So it was an afternoon paper. And I was open until 6 at that time. And I started, I got like six phone calls before I closed. Hey, where are you located? Where are you at? Just tell me where you're at. <clears throat> I was like, hey, there's going to be some people here. So the next day, I thought, well, maybe there'll be. And I got a couple of extra people to help out. And as soon as we opened at 10 o'clock, there was a line, and it didn't stop for five hours. I mean, it's unreal. How many people came in off that? It doesn't happen like that anymore, not from a newspaper, because people don't pay attention to the newspapers much. But at that time, it was huge. So I think he almost tripled our business for the first two months. And then when everything was settled down and people kind of, you know, settled back into their normal routines, I think we were up like 30%. Like 30%, and that's huge to get a 30% jump overnight in your business. And so that was something that really put us on the map. And it taught me that you had to go about things differently than you originally thought. So the first idea was the right idea to get a hold of John Hinderberger to have me to review, but not the execution of it. So it was a different, a different way to go about the same thing and get the, the result that I wanted. So that was... That was a, a huge part of what, um, what helped us out. Okay, let's go ahead and cut that. Okay. So, I opened up two more locations over the next, oh, five or six years. And um, one of them was in an area called Bellevue, which is kind of a downtown area. And one of them was up in Linwood. And Linwood was more of a neighborhood center. The neighborhood center didn't work because I was skewing more toward d lunchtime with, with hot dogs. But the Bellevue one was really successful. It was really popular. And, um, and so it was, um, it was just, wonderful to see you, you're growing and you're doing these things and you you meet new customers and different opportunities come because of that I had some customers that um, wanted to license or franchise the store and tr you know to do that and so in 2004 
I had the three locations that I had, and then I had five franchise locations, so we moved to eight. And franchising or licensing was the way we did it because it was a little bit less expensive way. Franchising can be extremely expensive, but for all intent and purposes, that's what we had. So licensing sounds like a cool deal, right? You, license, you franchise your name out, and then they pay you to use your name, right? They pay you to sell your hot dogs. How hard can it be? And so as we did that, as I did that, I was responsible for the operations of daily data operations of those stores to make sure they were, they were run properly, so control. So immediately you go from three to eight, and you have to make sure that you have um, you have operations manuals, which in the past I would visit the stores and teach and make sure that everybody was on board and knew what we were doing. But when you have that many stores, you, can no, you lose control of that, so you, you, you put in manuals and you put in procedures and how to do this and what to do that and how many ounces of onions to put on a Chicago dog or a chili dog or whatever it is that you're doing. And it's very, very regimented. And you have people that are inside those stores that you're trusting to expand your brand and to do it right. So you're not just making money off of them, but you're building your brand. You're building your brand or you're not building your brand. Because if you're not building your brand, it's going the other way. And so that's what, I, that's what became the problematic side of what we did there. And it was just a mad scramble to try to keep everything Doing, everybody doing the same thing for the right reason. And I'll give you an example of what I had not, uh, an unforeseen problem. So I had a store that was down south, individual owners. We had proprietary stuff, our own hot dogs and our own chili and these different things that you could buy through a distributor. You just call the distributor, have them delivered to the restaurant and you're there. So I got a call one day from the distributor and he said, that restaurant down there, in, in, down south, hasn't paid their bill in about a month. So I'm cutting them off. I'm cutting them off. They can't get your product anymore. And I was like, I, I never thought of that. I, I mean, I never thought that somebody wouldn't pay their bill and then they would cut off and they could no longer get my chili. So what they did is they no longer get my chili, they could no longer get my hot dog, so where did they go? They just go down to the gro they go down to cash and carry or smart and final, I don't know what you have right here, and buy Hormel chili out of a can and some hot dogs that they found and put them on them and sell them as Matt's famous chili dogs. And it was unbelievable. I had not thought of that problem that could possibly happen. And so you can stop it. Legally you can stop it. But you've got to get an attorney, and the attorney has to post and do all these things the right way, and then you wait for the response. So it took me six months to get the name off the building with all of the things that we had to do from a legal standpoint. So that became an absolute nightmare for me. Now for others it might not have been, but for me it was just like this is ridiculous. So I got a phone call one day on a Sunday and you go from, if, if, if you're thinking about entrepreneurship, you're going to be doing 60 hours a week. So 60 hours a week, does that seem like it's impossible? Not bad. So I moved from 60 to 80, and it kept on going. And it is unbelievably taxing. But that's what you're doing. You're trying to keep up and get these things going and work together with people to do these things. And you're just you're getting more and more exhausted. At least I was. So um, you have. Um, you have this a phone call that comes through and says there's <laughs> there's some kind of emergency I can't remember what it was there's some emergency you got to check out what's going on down at one of your stores so it's Sunday afternoon you get in the car and I'm driving and I, it's about a 30 minute drive to get to the store and I can't remember what it was I think I think something like the owner like walked out and left the store open like I quit or something like that and I'm driving down there, it's about half an hour, and I'm about halfway there, and I get this thought, totally clear, voice in my head, and it says, I hate my job. 
And the next voice said, and here's the wisdom for you, finding a job you don't like is pretty easy. You guys can all find a job that you don't like. And, and there'll be many here that will. And maybe you already have worked somewhere where it's like this, I don't like what I'm doing. I'm telling you, it's relatively easy. You can find a job that you don't like. But I didn't need to be in business for myself to get that job. So all of the responsibilities that I had, and then I hated what I was doing. And I was like, what am I doing here? This is ridiculous. This is not why I started. So, okay. so I, I called the licensees. I got them together, and I said, I'm not going to renew your license at the end of five years. So you can do what you want, but I'm not going to renew. And, and we, we ended those things. And I still had, I had my one store up in, in Linwood that I closed because I couldn't quite get it going. I had the one in Bellevue that was going great, but it got torn down for a high rise. And then I had the original store, this one here. I had that one still going. But I thought, maybe I, maybe I hate the whole business. Maybe I'm going to get out of it altogether. So I, I said, I'm going to go back into the store. This is November of 07. I'm going to go back in the store for one month. And if I don't like it, I'll sell everything and get out. I'll go do something else. Because I can go find a job I don't like. I've, I've already got it. I can go find another one. But not have the responsibilities. So I, I, uh, I went down into the original store here in November of 07 for one month. And I got in there for one week. Before one week was out, I went home and I told Christy, I totally love working at the store. Which is like, some, for some people, that's an indicator. I mean, you hear these stories about, hey, it's all, everything you want is right here in your own backyard or whatever. You don't have to go search very far for, to, be, to be totally happy. But for me, that was the case. So I said, I'm not going to sell the original store. I'm going to get out of these other ones and I'm going to go back. So for the last eight years, I still work inside that store every day. And business has gone up, and it's been fun, and I don't necessarily work anymore because it's fun to go to work. So I don't hate my job. So what do you, what do you learn? Um, and perhaps for those of you that are exploring this idea, is it something that you should do? And I'll just tell you some of the things that I've learned. And honestly, you can find things that will teach you stuff about yourself by just going out there and working in regular jobs and not taking the risk. But there's wonderful things that come from doing these things that you enjoy. But I think at the very minimum, if you are considering doing something along these lines, you ought to at the minimum have a passion about what you do. It's got to come from the inside and move yourself out. It has to be a passion because if you're not passionate about it, if it's only about the money, the money won't be there for a while and then you'll lose interest. And so there should be something that's coming from you that really truly believes that what you have is the best product out there. And you're going to work it and you're going to do it and it's through whatever comes, you're going to work through it and figure out a way to make it work. It's possible that it won't work. You have to know and that's one of the hard parts about it. You may not know when it's not working and you have to actually cut it and quit. However, at the very minimum, you ought to be very passionate about what it is that you're selling. For me, it was hot dogs. And for you, it could be, I don't know, it could be something else. But, but whatever it is, you ought, to be, you ought to be passionate about it. So as you go through, for me, these things, it has taught me patience, staying open to new ideas of how to do things. Um, it's taught me how hard it is to influence human behavior. It seems like it would be easy to move somebody, to motivate somebody to do something. It's extremely difficult, and it usually costs an enormous amount of money. So that's a lesson you learn pretty quick. I told you I asked the question how hard it can be. Being an entrepreneur has told me how hard it can be. And it more than likely will be extremely difficult. So you have to figure out ways to get around it. Um, it's taught me how valuable mistakes can be. It's extremely difficult to have your name on a building or a business or whatever it is that you're going to do and have it potentially fail because you think it's really not fun to be thought of in terms of failure. But I have learned an enormous amount from the mistakes that I've made. In fact, you've heard it, but you probably learn more from the mistakes than you do 
the good stuff because the good stuff you think you're hot and you don't think you need anyone to tell you anything because it worked. But when you make mistakes, you're usually willing to be open and listen to new ideas and figure out different ways to get around it. Um, it has taught me um, what I'm good at and, cons and conversely what I'm not good at. Um, some of these things, for most of you, you've heard all of these things, but it, it, it has you value what you have. So when I'm at the hot dog stand now, it's totally fun. And I don't think about what I don't have. I, I actually focus on what I do. And it's, um, it's a mindset that tends to make you happier. And you've probably heard that from all different sources. Um, we're almost out of time. If you're, if you're married, you better have a good marriage. And if you have a good marriage and you do it, you better work at it hard because it really puts an enormous strain on your family. It really does. Especially when you're passionate about it because you'll get up at 2 in the morning and do, do something if it needs to be done. And, that, and those kinds of things can be hard on a family. So you should take that into account if you're, if you're considering doing it because your wife or husband or your kids can kind of say, hey, what gives? Where's dad or mom? Okay, so I'm going to just, on my business card, I have those, one of those punch cards. You can get like, you buy 11, you get one free. It says in there, buy 11 and Matt will think of something to give you for free. So people go like, well, what do I get for free? And I say, you get advice. You get free advice. So I'm giving you free advice here, too. Uh, whether it's through church or it's through books or it's through uh, some sage that lives at uh, the top of a mountain, you have heard what, what makes you happy. And I sat where you s sit now. And you don't know what you don't know, and that's no knock, because I don't know what I don't know. But there's things that you don't know until you've experienced them. So I'm here to tell you something that you may just disregard, or you may say, yeah, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it. But it is not about the money. And it's not about fame. And it's not about the opposite sex. Um, it is, um, it's about relationships and how you deal with your family and your friends and the people that you meet. It's all that will matter for you. And so I guess what I'm saying to you is, um, my free advice to you is to to not regret the past and try not to worry about the future, um, to be present, to be kind, to work hard, and to wait for it to unfold. Thank you. <laughs>